Welcome to the last video on building a Nixie clock. Today, we're gonna to be making a case out of solid white oak and 3D printed parts. So I thought I would open up Fusion 360 here really quick and just kind of show everyone what I started with and how I came up with the design. Uh, you can see that I did end up creating multiple parts that ended up getting 3D printed and those will all be shared on Thingiverse. So I started with a PNG file for the PCB that's hosted on the GitHub repo for GRA and AFCH, the company that makes the Nixie clock. So once I had that, I used GrabCAD to find a model of an Arduino at Mega 2560 and I overlaid that and placed it such that the mounting holes line up. And then I kind of built the case around that. So once this was all done and I was happy with the design, I must have printed off 10 of these before I got all the tolerances right. And you know, I ended up moving this temperature probe to the outside because it was like one degree hotter on the inside. I wasted quite a bit of plastic getting this right. Uh, but when I finally did, it came out pretty sharp. The threaded inserts can be installed with a soldering iron at around 100 degrees. When that's all done, we're ready to go ahead and mount all the components. So there's three pieces. There's a top, a front, and a back. I was able to use the same PNG or the same drawing to kind of mark out where all these Nixie tubes kind of poke up out of the case. And that all ended up lining up uh, pretty well. And I used just some basic sketches to put on some of the like personalization engraving details. And then I also on the back just made vents, which is more decorative than anything. What the real magic of Fusion 360 is, is that it allows you to create these objects, but then also to switch over to manufacturing mode, which will help you generate a tool path to actually cut this thing. So let's switch over to manufacturing mode and I'll show you the tool paths that I created. Uh, they're very simple. This is actually my first time using Fusion 360 to generate these tool paths and the output can be directly imported into Carbide Motion. So I'm over in the Manufacture tab of Fusion 360, and I'm just gonna go over quickly how I generated a few of these tool paths and how I selected the post processor. So if we take a look at one of these tool paths, you can see just for the top, there's three operations. So the first one, it's going to go through and you know mill out all the holes for the Nixie tubes. And the second one, it's going to actually just do a outline cut. So it's gonna cut the outline to being the right dimensions. And then the final one is just a chamfer cut. So it's a really shallow, like one millimeter, 45 degree angle, just to take the rough edges off everything. And you can select any one of these in Fusion and you can just simulate it and just to see if that's what you know what you were expecting to get and you can speed it up. So here I used a pocketing operation just to cut these, these vents out and once again finish it off by cutting out the outer dimension and then doing a chamfer operation on it. So the front of the case is a little bit different because it has some details that need to be engraved. Fusion 360 provides an engraving operation which I did use to cut out the details in the corner. And then I used a trace operation to cut out these little icons in the corner as well as the main lettering. And what trace allows you to do is to trace over an existing sketch. So you just have to provide it, the operation a sketch on, on the correct plane and it'll basically trace over that sketch. Finally, we're gonna do a cutout operation to just get the piece down to its final dimension. I don't have any footage of planing down the white oak and resawing it, but I do have photos, so I'll show you those quickly. The white oak I had was purchased rough on four sides, so it was first run through the jointer and then resawed using a bandsaw to split it into two thinner pieces. These thinner boards were then planed down to their final dimension of five millimeters. This left me with six equal-sided blanks, which I could mount into the CNC mill using some double-sided tape. I started the CNC milling process by first cutting the top piece which would allow clearance for the Nixie tubes. Most of these cuts were done in five or so passes, so I wasn't removing too much material in one pass. One really cool feature with the Carbide Nomad is that it has a Z-axis probe, so whenever you change the tool, you don't have to reset your Z. It'll automatically probe and set the Z accordingly. The 
top pieces were then given a simple dado joint using the table saw. Wood glue was then brushed into all of the joints. And then painter's tape was used with a clamping block to apply pressure during curing. After the glue cured, I sanded it down with 220 grit sandpaper to remove any excess glue. So I have a pretty basic finishing process for projects like these. I use Watco semi-gloss lacquer and I cut it 50-50 with lacquer thinner. I spray it out of an HVLP gun and I apply around three coats. Well, that wraps up this video series on building an ICSI clock. If you want more information, please look in the description below as I will include all my design files for this project. If you enjoyed this whole series, please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.